Hello there, this is John V, Software Evangelist at Jscape. And today, I'm going to teach you how to configure a high availability cluster for various TCP and UDP services. When your server downtime start becoming more frequent, that probably means it's time for some major changes. One option would be to set up a high availability cluster. If you want to know how to do that, you've landed on the right place. And this tutorial will guide you in setting up a high availability cluster for FTP, FTPS, HTTP, SFTP, HTTPS, SMTP, and other TCP or UDP services. A high availability cluster is a system consisting of two or more servers running the same type of service, for example, all running SFTP. And its purpose is to provide network services with as little downtime as possible. A cluster can be set up using either an active-active or active-passive configuration. There are other configurations out there, but these two are the most common. But this particular tutorial only focuses on the active-active configuration. If you don't know what active-active and active-passive high availability configurations are, I've provided a link to a post that can help you with that in the description if you're watching this on YouTube or in the post if you're watching this on LinkedIn or Facebook. To set up this cluster, we'll be using Jscape MFT Gateway. MFT Gateway is a reverse proxy that also acts as a load balancer. As a reverse proxy, it provides a TCP or UDP service to external clients in behalf of the servers behind it. And as a load balancer, it distributes incoming traffic to those same servers thereby preventing any single server from getting overloaded. I'll be assuming you already have existing servers running the same service and all we need to do is to bring them together into a cluster on Jscape MFT Gateway. Note that those servers should have exactly the same configurations, otherwise you'll encounter problems along the way. The article, Simplifying MFT Server Clustering and High Availability Through Global Data Stores, discusses how to synchronize two servers so that they can have exactly the same settings. I've provided a link to that post in the description if you're watching this on YouTube or in the post if you're watching this on LinkedIn or Facebook. Another vital component in clustering is having some kind of shared storage. The article setting up a NAS shared storage for your file transfer servers provides more information on that subject. Again, I've provided links for that. So, are you ready to proceed with this tutorial? Let's begin. Launch the MFT Gateway Manager. And then once you've logged in, navigate to the Clusters menu and then click the Add button. That should bring up the Add Cluster dialog. Give this cluster a name. After that, select the protocol of the service which you want this cluster to serve. So, for example, if you have a set of HTTP servers that you want to bring together into a cluster, then you simply select the HTTP protocol. Notice that Jscape MFT Gateway supports a wide range of network protocols including FTP, FTPS, HTTP, HTTPS, SFTP or SSH, SMTP, POP3, IMAP4, and other TCP and UDP protocols. If you're going to set up an SFTP cluster, just select TCP. SFTP runs on TCP, so that should do the trick. After specifying the protocol, expand the algorithm list and select the load balancing algorithm you want to apply to this cluster. As of this writing, the supported algorithms are round robin, weighted round robin, random, least connections, and weighted least connections. If you wish to know the difference between these algorithms, read the post comparing load balancing algorithms. Again, there's a link to that in the description or in the post. Now it's time to add our remote host to this cluster. Click the Add button to add the first host. Now there are two Add buttons there. Just click the first one to add a remote host. Enter your remote server's IP address or host name 
and select the appropriate port number. The system will automatically recommend a port number based on the protocol you selected earlier. In the case of TCP though, the system will automatically recommend port 22 which happens to be the default port number for SFTP and SSH. So if you're using a different port number, just change that value. Otherwise, leave it as is. Now click add to add that server. Once the server has been successfully added, it will be displayed in the list of hosts for that cluster. Add more nodes to the cluster as needed. So let's just add a second node here. Once you're done adding hosts to the cluster, finalize the cluster creation process by clicking the second add button. You should then see your newly created cluster in the main clusters panel. Now that you have your cluster ready, the next step would be to create a reverse proxy service that would make this cluster available to client applications. So go to the services menu and click the add button. Select the client protocol for this reverse proxy service. This is just a protocol clients will be using when they connect to this service. In our example, that would be SFTP. After that, select the server protocol. This is the protocol MFT Gateway will be using when it connects to the remote hosts in the cluster we created earlier. So in our example, that would be again SFTP. For the local host and port number, specify a host name or IP address and port number on your MFT Gateway server. This will be the IP address and port number where your MFT Gateway will be listening for client requests. After that, click the Cluster Radio button and select the name of the cluster you created earlier. Lastly, click the Add button to create the service or add slash start to create and then start the service. All right, at this point, this Jscape MFT Gateway cluster will be ready to accept incoming traffic and distribute the traffic across the nodes in the cluster using the load balancing algorithm we selected earlier. Because traffic is distributed between multiple hosts, this will reduce the risk of downtime caused by an overloaded host. But what if one of those hosts go down for whatever reason? You'll probably want to be notified as soon as that happens so you can go to that host, troubleshoot, and fix the issue. You might also want that host to be temporarily removed from the cluster so that no incoming traffic will be directed to it. We'll teach you how to enable those capabilities in our next video, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, if you've been following the instructions in this tutorial, you should now have a running high availability cluster providing whatever service you created it for.